is up YouTube? What's good? What's good? We just had it. It's time for life. I love reality TV and I'm going to be reacting to some shows on this channel. I've already done 90 Day Fiance. Go check that out over here once you finish watching this video. But yes, I've done that and I will be reacting to some more reality TV shows if you so please. I love reality TV but what I love even more than reality TV is investigating the real in reality TV. Okay, so let's dive into the foolery of it all. Get your snack and your drink. Kick your feet up and let's see what you do. So, we're going to talk about love after lockup. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of a prefix, a little bit of an introduction. I'm going to talk about the cast members, what love after lockup is all about. Just a few seconds and then we're going to get right on to this episode so love after lockup in this show people meet their potential future spouses for the first time once the bars are removed from the relationship and quite literally we're talking about bars because these are people that are on the outside and they've met people that are inside prison sometimes they meet these people whilst they're in prison actually 90% of the time or 99% of the time these are people on the outside in the free world that actually meet the people that are in prison and they seek them out on like these dating websites that are for people that are in prison now, I didn't know that you could have apps and all these things over there, but they establish some kind of relationship, have some kind of pen pal situation going on, or they're on these dating apps, right? And then they form a relationship. Sometimes they even get married to these people that are inside the prison, and then they wait for them for years, for months. They wait for them till they come out. And just as they come out, the cameras are ready, and they are rolling to see what happens because the way is full of bumps, some strong emotions. It's a very long and rocky road and very awkward at times but these inmates are tasting freedom for the first time in a very long time and the viewers you and i we follow along as they jump straight into dating meeting the family and this can sometimes also mean children because sometimes people have children from either end um and yeah they're experiencing a whole lot of first times and nerve-wracking moments and we are there for the ride and i just love to see how people live their lives. It is very, very interesting. So the first episode of Love After Lockup was in 2018 and it's been going strong ever since through the network WeTV. And this is the third season. I've actually done some reviews on this on my channel before. So this is season number three. And in this season, we're following six new couples. We've got Jessica and Maurice, Sean and Destiny, John and Christiana, Scott and Lindsay, Tyrese and Chanda, Chevelle and Quaylon. And there's a possible seventh couple, which is going to be Heather and Dylan, which will appear later on in the season. Now in this episode, episode five, Quaylon is caught in the middle between his mom and Chevelle. Tyrese dresses to the nines for Chanda's release. And Jessica struggles to find her, her place in Maurice's life in Compton. Scott demands answers and Destiny reveals she has secrets of her own. Ooh. So we're gonna dive right on into all of that. Also, I'm gonna be doing my hair. I'm going got time. We're busy. I literally went to the town like this earlier on. I've got a mask in my hair. I got this on. It was fully covered though. And I'm just gonna, it's been steaming. I'm just gonna blow dry for a little bit. Ooh, feels so good. Yeah, I'm gonna be reviewing hair things on my channel as well at some point. If you're into that, stay tuned. It's a lifestyle channel. We do everything up in here. But yeah, I'm gonna be doing my hair whilst we watch this because we have to manage our time properly and efficiently and effectively. And yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'll be right back. So basically, here we have Sean and Destiny. They go out to a nice little lunch or whatever, I think straight out of prison. And Destiny's mom at some point is interrogating Sean. So like, do you have any kids? How old are you? All these things. Comes out, homeboy Sean over here is 45 years old, but he told Destiny that he was 36. So the mom is pissed. Now on top of everything, he let her know that he had two kids. Turns out he's got six. Now I think this is so disgusting and ridiculous. Like, which of the <laughs> which of the six kids were you denying when you were saying that? Like, who are your two favorite kids that you love to claim? but you like to deny the other four. Like, I think that's really ridiculous. The first email, I said, how many kids do you have? What's your history? What, have you ever been married? Well, then I must have forgot. I don't know what else he could be lying about. 
He could be a serial killer for all we know. We don't know who he is. It's not really anything you have to worry about me. Anything that's in the dark with me, I won't ever lie to you. I mean, there's a few secrets that I'm keeping from Sean um, that I don't really plan on telling him. Then we have Jessica and Maurice. So Maurice actually has a daughter who is like 10 or something. She's quite old. And they're going to visit her and his baby mama with his wife, Jessica. So they got married whilst he was in prison. And basically they go there and it's like super awkward. Um, well, at the beginning it's actually super cute because the girl runs up to her daddy. Then they go into the house. Apparently, Jessica does talk to Michaela every single day, but then when they're doing this uh, confessionals type thing, you know, when they, when the producers film you se kind of separately, and they're talking to Michaela's mom, and she's like, I don't really know Jessica, and I've never seen Maurice date a white girl. Basically, they were high school sweethearts kind of thing, and she's never seen, um, never seen her with another, with another, yeah, with another race, a woman of another race. So she's kind of side-eyeing the whole situation, but I'm like, so you don't know who Jessica is, but you let your kids speak to her every single day? What are they talking about? Is that not kind of weird? You would think that they would have a good relationship as well. Like, what's the point in that? Then they go inside the house, and Jessica's just kind of sitting there whilst Maurice is calling all kinds of family members and stuff like that now. Sitting there, kind of being ignored. Why wouldn't she just introduce me to everybody here? I don't know if this is an American thing. I always find it weird with these shows. Nobody offers anybody any drinks. I never see no drinks on the table. Not even a glass of water, nothing. I don't see a bowl of nuts. Even now, now it's Koro time, so you wouldn't really share a bowl of nuts like that, like that. But there's nothing. The whole house is just dry. I know y'all like food. I know y'all like to eat. I know y'all eat a lot. Mm? This is not even a stereotype. I've been there. I know y'all like food. So what's with the dryness? Like, I don't understand that. See, that's what I mean when I'm talking about reality TV. Like, is it even really real? But then I've spoken to some American people that I know and they actually said that, yeah, actually in America, that's not really a thing that you're just going to be offering randoms, you know, food and drinks when they come to your house. Like, you don't, you don't actually have to do that. So that's really interesting. In any case, they sit there. Jessica is super awkward. They get in the car. And she, she does something that I can understand. She's very frustrated. She's actually quite emotional. And the first thing Maurice is saying is, what the heck is wrong with you? And I think that's such a wrong response. Like, that's the most awkward thing. You should have done something about that. What's wrong? You made me feel so awkward. Oh. Why are you mad? I'm sitting in the corner by myself. No, no one's talking to me. This is Michaela's family. Okay, but what the is wrong with you? you. And I think that's such a wrong response. Like if somebody is genuinely upset about something enough to cry, they're still in the in the driveway of of the house. Like why on earth? Why on earth are you over there to asking her what the heck is wrong with her? Like that's not really nice. You know what I mean? So okay, that's your wife. You need to figure out what the heck is wrong with her. She's actually telling you what is wrong with her. You just don't want to listen. You don't feel like there's anything you can do. And then you go on to say, it is what it is. And that annoys me even more. Because I hate it when people say that. Recently, DT said that about Koro. The people that have Koro, he was like, well, it is what it is. And I hate it when people say that because it is what it is. But it could be something else. And that is in your hands sometimes, most of the times. So you can't just walk around, take away all your responsibility and just be like, it is what it is. I just, I just, I just hate that. Like, especially when it's something bad, just sitting there and saying it is what it is. It's just disgusting. It's just lazy. It is what it is. Okay, so here we have Chevelle and Quaylon. Quaylon has been in jail for 12 years. Now he's out. He ain't got no parole. He ain't got no nothing. He's out, out. He's got nobody to answer to. And he is so happy to be a free man. They go to this restaurant, he's holding a menu for the first time in 12 years because you know in prison you don't have a choice. You will eat what's on the general menu. So yeah, he's having a good old funky time with his bae and his mom and the whole thing is still kind of surreal to him. Now his mom wants him to move out wherever she is, but bae, Chevelle over here, wants him to move kind of back to where he was when he started getting into trouble. His mom moved out of there so that when he comes out of prison, he would be, you know, he would not be around the wrong people anymore and he would be able to make better life choices. 
Last time when we lived in Kansas City, Quaylen was in all kinds of trouble. I was in and out of court, and he ended up in prison for 12 years. She definitely does not want to lose her son again after 12 years of missing him. So that's going to be an interesting one. That's going to be a little bit of a back and forth because his heart is like, it's like, it has, like, it's in two places. We prefer for you live close to me. No. Uh, not at all. Mm -mm. Not at all. I just don't want to go somewhere and she ain't comfortable there. Oh, so here we have Shanda and Tyrese. Now Tyrese has old kids. In fact, they so old, they're as old as Shanda, which is about 28 years old. And they think the whole thing is a scam. They think she's here for his money. And he's like, I'm a grown man. I'm not gonna let anybody do me like that. Check it out. She using you, old man. She gonna be a sugar baby looking for a sugar daddy. Right. She gonna use my daddy for his money. Do I look like I let a mother? Use me. So yeah, what can you do? He's a grown, he's a grown man, and so we're gonna see how this unfolds. He's come here with a three-piece suit. He put some. He said he's smelling good, and yeah, he's fantasizing about that first day together with Shonda, cause it's about to go down. He put some three uh, roses on the bed, and he thinks he's really done a lot to make her smile for days. That, that, those are exactly his words. So anyway, Sean and Destiny, Destiny keeps switching modes. She's like, if you tell me another lie, I'ma punch you in the face if you tell me, like she goes aggressive and then she's like, oh babe, I wanna go skydiving. I wanna go para something, something. I wanna go parasailing, go skydiving. All this dangerous stuff. Then she's like, I want you to buy me a coach bag. She slipped that in really uh, sneaky. Babe, I want you to give me a coach purse. And um, yeah, she just keeps switching modes. But I guess when you come out of prison, you just want to do everything. It's like time is not even enough for you. Time is not even really on your side. You feel like, I guess, not that I would know. Um, thank God. But yeah, she, she just wants to do it all, experience it all. And then they go into the room and dudes put flowers on the bed and everything and yeah it's about to go down but then she explains that actually one thing that she's been keeping from him is that she was actually especially active with women in the prison and he doesn't know about this and she she intends to keep on doing this even though they're in a committed relationship so that's why sometimes i'm like is this reality tv really real because i'm saying this because you know that all this stuff is going to come out you know that everything is going to come out on international television forget national television international television boo so why 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 all these secrets that you're blurting out in front of a camera you know it's gonna come out so yeah that's what i think it's ridiculous because how's your relationship gonna hold water when all this stuff comes out later so basically she's she plans on cheating on him at some point in time and him not knowing about it oh but he will and we'll be here to see the train wreck here we've got lindsay and scott so lindsay was supposed to get off a plane and she didn't she was supposed to be released get off a plane scott waited got there with a the limo and everything ended up having dinner with the limousine driver which is very funny it's just talking about life and his relationship with lindsay and yeah i had to come home Turns out Lindsay's got a kid who's like 10 and the grandma over here, Lindsay's mom is like, yeah, I was ready to be like, yo, Lindsay, take your kid back. We ain't doing this no more. I'm not going to be babysitting your kid all your life. Come out and fix your stuff. And the kid said she was crying for, for two hours after she realized that the mom, you know, hadn't come out of the plane or hadn't been released. And basically they're now, they've now come together to have a conference call and see what on earth has happened to Lindsay over there. And yeah, one thing to note, <laughs> that's very interesting. This Lindsay's daughter, she's got fake nails on. And I'm like, yo, at 10 years old? I don't know, but kids these days, they're growing up faster than in my day. Not to say I'm ancient or anything, but yeah, there's a definite difference. All of a sudden, here goes Lindsay talking about some, yeah, she had uh, tattoos of girls that she was dating tattooed on her really really big she's got one that's felicia <laughs> bye felicia <laughs> um yeah she's got one like that she's got another one that's monique she's got another one that's what allison or something one on her arm one on her butt i'm just like and instead of her you know kind of saying how she regretted doing all this no she's like and after it like what and also how did she get these tattoos i know that people do do tattoos in prison 
I don't think you're allowed to, but they find ways of doing it. And then Chevelle, Chevelle has booked this very nice hotel, and now she's worried because her first night that she was thought she was going to be with Quaylon, the mom's there and she doesn't know what to do. And she's like, oh, I know that he's been away for 12 years, but you know, I had this romantic night, blah, 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 blah. Why don't people know how to communicate? Why isn't this something you can communicate? Why can't you just say, hey, mom, like, this is the situation. Oh, might I add, I think it would be a very good idea in this case <laughs> for these people to really date each other outside of prison. Outside of prison, really date each other, right? Really, really get to know each other. And then from there on out, get married, tan 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 before they can do the tan 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 So Jessica and Maurice are staying at Maurice's cousin's place in LA whilst he waits for his parole to get transferred to Las Vegas where Jessica actually resides. And she's feeling really isolated. And when she says that, I guess she means like she doesn't really blend in. She doesn't really feel like she's part of, you know, what's going on. And I'm like, well, you should. <laughs> this is why I'm saying these people, these people are going too quick. You know, that's your husband and you don't even, you don't even really gel with his family. How does that happen? You know, they're doing everything back to front and that's going to be one bumpy ride because then now you're, you're getting to know all these people now when you're already husband and wife, that's just wrong now he's flipping through the obituaries from over the years all the people that have kicked the bucket whilst he was incarcerated and he's just like wow this one died wow that one died and she again she's just there she's kind of uncomfortable i guess she's kind of like this this is not the fun that i thought i was gonna have she's like i'm missing home my comfort zone my this my that and she's all like yeah she's just uncomfortable and i'm like is this not the time to maybe ask a bit of questions like who were these people like how did you know them how was it growing up here you know how was it growing up where you know like do these people have real conversations what do they talk about all day every day do they just have like when they're in the prison distance do they just have like phone you know what and that's it like i'm confused what are those conversations like because if she was more into these stories, she would know what's going on. She'd also be interested. I think with relationships, it's all about being interested in each other, right? You need to show some kind of interest. You can't just be like, I don't care about anything. Ask a lot of questions as well. There's never a dumb question. That's what I think. Because if you didn't say it, if you didn't explain it, it's never dumb. Because how the heck can I know? So I'm just always the type of person that likes to ask a lot of questions. You can't just be, you know, I understand it. There's also a, the cultural thing, which is why people don't like to date outside of their race. But you know, you did. So did you know what comes with that? Because all this stuff comes with that. And we all know that all this stuff comes with that, right? It is not really a surprise. So I wonder why she's shocked now that this is the life. Like, that's why I always say you don't just marry the person, you marry the entire family. You marry the entire family. Did you see them? All that stuff happened with the cameras rolling. Like these people don't care. They will really click clack you in, in in no time. In no time. It's scary. And did she know that she was getting herself into into a relationship with a guy that's that's that could potentially be in this much trouble? I don't know if she really. She seems like you know your regular you know woman. Never dealt with any of this gang stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Do people really know what they're doing when they're doing the things that they do? I don't know. I think maybe the reason Lindsay didn't come out last night was she's just smart enough to stay in trouble. Lindsay's mom is saying to the daughter, they don't care that you cried yourself to sleep at night um, because the daughter is asking why nothing is public record. Sorry, I don't know, baby. Instead of actually giving a good lesson on why things are not public record instead of letting your 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 granddaughter really know what's going on because obviously they can't just tell anybody that calls where their inmates are what they're doing you can't give out this information it's confidential it's just like when you're in the hospital and somebody be calling like i want to know how my aunt aunt uh, margaret is doing how does anybody know whether you're you you really whether that's you really your aunt and whether your aunt would want you to have that information we don't know that so yeah that's a ridiculous thing he was doing the deed just to do the deed but now he's making the law and i'm like you had six kids just to to do it just to do it wasn't no niceness to it but you had six kids okay reality tv mr man sean takes a picture of 
Destiny while she's sleeping and she has her thumb in her mouth. Why? You're 28. I'm confused. So it's something like if Lindsay messes up before her court date, <laughs> mm, Scott will have to pay $50,000. It's something like that. In any case, there's a lot of money on the line. And she's just like, obviously, I'm not going to put that in jeopardy. But if I want to drink, I'm just going to drink. And he's like, I think it's better if you don't drink. And she's like, I can do whatever I want. If I want to drink, I want to drink. I wouldn't jeopardize that. Really? I just need to make sure that you stay out of trouble and everything because of the bond. You know, because $50,000 is a lot of money. To have. And um, that's real funny because, well, she seems very nonchalant about the whole thing. Meanwhile, it's not your money that's on the line. It's this poor guy's money that's on the line. Why can't people? People have fun without alcohol I personally don't know for me just put me at a party the vibes got to be right the people got to be right the music's got to be right and I will dance I will sing I will grab people onto the dance floor just live life that's that's YOLO to me YOLO to me is literally seize the day YOLO to me is literally carpe diem L YOLO to me is literally go out there and be the happiest you can be not go out there and do something that could potentially make you happy for a moment but it could also potentially land you in jail and that's not for everybody people drink responsibly obviously and there's nothing wrong with drinking but people like this might have a problem and you have a lot at stake here so why would you jeopardize any of that just to have a sippy sip of alcohol are you crazy? I have only been out not even 24 hours and Sean is already trying to tell me what to do. You've only been out 24 hours and you've already done the boom boom with this guy that you barely know. That's what's really concerning. Forget him trying to be controlling. Oh, he can control you, all right? Now that he's got all of you. Hmm. Well, that's, that's the problem I have with these shows. These people move too fast. Literally just met her mom and I think sister that same day that she got out. Hi hi and then he was trying to go in for a hug and stuff like that. super awkward they move too fast and 90 percent of the time it does not work out if you don't have two very serious people that are really like okay we're really going to do this really want to get my really want to get serious in life it's just not going to go anywhere this is terrible these people try to be adventurous you see all kinds of things i've seen so many episodes where people are trying to jeopardize this parole and whatnot whatnot like trying to get married right out of prison right out of prison some guys some couple they got married and they had to go and see the parole officer and they just had a few minutes to spare but they thought it would be best to just go ahead with their bootleg wedding on a truck with this weird purple carpet that had to happen there and then are you serious what people need to know is that people out here don't care who they clack clack okay they don't care who they do that to this guy was talking to Maurice. He was out there walking about. The cameras were rolling and they didn't care. They still threatened his life, basically. Um, yeah, there's so many of them that they don't care that you're on a TV show. They will gladly, they will gladly send you back to prison. That has happened before with Michael in another episode. I think he was late to his probation officer meeting and back to jail he went. Was it that or was it something else? In any case, these people have no mercy. And so it doesn't mean that because you have a TV crew following you around, you're going to be A-OK -okay and nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, no. The law is still the law. The law is still the law. And that's what people need to know. People need to realize that the law is still the law. You are not above anybody. If anything, in these days, Koro has showed us that we are not above any, any, anybody at all. We just are not. <laughs> we are not. In any case, stay tuned. I'll be reviewing this again next week. So stay tuned. I'll be reviewing other things. And I've got other videos coming up as well original content um lined up to come on this channel so make sure you're here when it pops off make time for glorious life it's time to start what living it right god bless if you're not already part of the family make sure you hit bump stomp as on to that subscribe button comment because i really want to know what you think about all this interesting stuff unfold like because you obviously like this video and it is free completely free it doesn't do anything to you like if you liked it like the video show some love let me see that you liked it so that i can pop out more videos for you show me that love you came here you got your snack you got your drink you kicked your feet up you enjoyed so now so now i i need to see that love man i need to see that like button turn blue on your end i'm just saying so yeah do all that and in the meantime hit that notification bell whilst you're at it and i'll see you in the next one which will be very soon 
make time for glorious life. It's time to start a what? Living it right. God bless.